When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with his banjo on his back and holding two tablets of the covenant law, he was not aware that his banjo technique was righteous because he had spoken with the God of Clawhammer Banjo who had gifted unto him these Ten Commandments of Clawhammer Banjo. That is all a true real life story. So these are, as far as I'm concerned, the 10 most important rules for playing Clawhammer Banjo. If you stick to these, I, I think you're pretty much guaranteed to become a godlike Clawhammer Banjo player, or I will give you your money back. Um, but seriously, your playing can't really go wrong following these rules as long as you stick to the general guidelines. Um, as you progress, some of them will become less important, maybe they will fall by the wayside a bit, or you'll find exceptions to them, times when you don't want to apply them. Um, basically, you can stop being as attentive to them, but when you start, they are super, super important. I cannot overstate how important it is that you stick to these. Um, now, some people might watch this video and point out, ah, yes, but Jacob, I've seen videos of people on YouTube who don't follow these rules and they are actually quite good Clawhammer banjo players. But those people are wrong. As we know, these commandments were given to Moses by God and you can't really argue with that. Also though, some people will get away with not following all of these rules to the absolute letter. And again, as I said, there comes a point when you, you, you don't have to at points and you can choose not to. For example, I've, I've seen good players uh, online not follow um, like commandment number five, which is all about your thumb landing on the string with each strike. But not following that rule or other rules will definitely hold their playing back a little bit. The best claw hammer players do follow these rules pretty closely and when they don't it's conscious and they are in a position to break them because they've already developed their technique. But if you are a beginner player or intermediate you should definitely watch your playing to make sure that you are following them pretty strictly. It's also worth noting that these rules are mainly directed at the claw hammer hand whether you're left or right handed but the claw hammer hand not the fretting hand and that's simply because we're looking at the difficulties of the claw hammer technique. Fretting is honestly largely the same across all fretted stringed instruments whether that's guitar or bass guitar it's not super different so it's not really a unique challenge for the claw hammer of frailing style uh, it's still important to get left-handed technique right but it's not really that that we'll be primarily focusing on in this video again i kind of overemphasize how useful these 10 rules will be for you if they are followed properly but if you're anything like literally all of my students you know who you are, then you will to some degree struggle with them or hey, you might not even believe me honestly to start off with. But again, I am actually right on this stuff. So I strongly recommend that you at least try to follow them. I don't know what else to say. So let's just get into this. And look, there's gonna be stupid jokes all the way through, but it is actually a serious list that will definitely help any beginner or intermediate player polish or develop their technique. So what are the 10 commandments of Clawhammer Banjo? So in a general order, maybe not of importance, but in order of what needs to be sorted first to last, let's go through them. So number one, thou shalt sit up straight with thy banjo in thy lap, between thy legs and pointing slightly up. I'm not gonna recite all the rules with this stupid archaic language, actually, I'm already sick of the joke, it's getting tiresome. Um, so this isn't really right hand or left handed stuff, but it's super important to point out. You do need to try to get it right off the bat. Posture is important and every instrument, you know, has its own posture that, you know, is recommended to sit with. Uh, it's all largely the same. It's not too dissimilar to guitar. Uh, also, as you get better and you're more comfortable with the instrument, you can start slouching and lounging about, but not at first. So really try to work on your posture. Come to it like this. You want to make sure your shoulders are straight. We don't want shoulders like this, straight, you're relaxed, you gotta watch for like tension in different parts of your body, straight back. If you're leaning against something that can help because you don't wanna just be holding your back up and you can get sore eventually. Uh, like this, banjo between your legs. So it's not like a guitar where it'll sit on either leg, it wants to be between your legs. Uh, like this, and you want it pointing up slightly. So not like this, guitar players will hold it a bit more like that. We don't wanna hold it like that. Not too high up either, really, ideally. Everyone will have a different ideal angle that suits them personally, but I think it's kind of generally 45 degrees. Um, so yeah, so that's the general posture. Your right arm wants to be coming over the banjo around this kind of area. A lot of people will have an armrest here and it kind of sits over here like that. You don't want your hand to be coming in perpendicular like this, nor do you want it to be coming in at this kind of right angle. That just doesn't work. Again, it's this kind of 45 degree angle. This will help you hit the strings correctly, confidently, loudly, and in time, accurately, which is not the most important thing to start off with, which we'll get to in a bit. So yeah, general posture. 
Um, everybody is different, so I can I, I don't want to get too specific about what it is, but you need to find a comfortable posture. And most importantly, if you find yourself getting tense and uncomfortable, stop for a second, kind of work out where those tense spots are. It might be your arm, it might be your back, and just kind of shake it off a bit. Just stand up for a second, come back to it, and then try to find a different position. Everybody is different, as I keep saying, so you'll have to work out what suits you. If, you, if you're playing a little a while like this, you know, like this kind of position, you realize actually just slightly lower neck angle, slightly higher would suit you better, give it a go. And again, similar for your position um, in your legs and stuff like that. Um, yeah, the one thing, when it's sitting between your legs, um, the banjo is quite neck heavy, and because this is round, it can have a tendency to just do this. And because we're... We're trying to play things with our left hand. It's sometimes difficult to hold the neck up whilst playing things because it's doing this and you're trying to hold it up and play. So really, you want your posture to help you hold the banjo in place as much as possible without the use of this left hand. So for me, it's sitting between my legs. My legs kind of are on either side of it and they hold it in place a little bit so it doesn't fall as much. And then this arm comes around and sits on top and my right arm and the it between my legs is enough to hold the banjo in place. Um, again, this sounds like trivial, but it's really important because now I don't need to worry about this left hand holding everything up. It just isn't. If you have a closed back banjo, it's slightly harder because the closed back is very low friction and it will just slide really easily. So that can be a bit of a struggle, but just work out what's best for you and just be conscious of kind of what your body's telling you, what's uncomfortable, what isn't working. Cool, that's commandment number one. Posture and position, super important. Commandment number two, move your arm, not your wrist, not your fingers. And it's a big movement. So this is about the claw hammer motion. And this is especially true when you first start playing. Over time, your motions will become smaller, but start off with nice big motions from the arm. Not like this from your wrist, not like this from your fingers. It's from your arm like this. There will be a little bit of wrist motion because it's relaxed and there'll be a bit of finger motion, but it's not what's powering the technique. The power is kind of coming from your elbow and this, this forearm bit. This is really important. Keep your wrist straight. Don't have it coming in like this or like this, nor angled like this or this. It really is nice and straight. There will be like a little bit of flex in it, but that's just a function of being relaxed. Don't worry if when doing this, because it's like a big motion, don't worry if you're not feeling accurate and you're just hitting all the strings willy-nilly. Don't worry if you whack the head a lot, like this, or the thumb goes off the head. Don't worry about accuracy, don't worry about these noises. You really gotta embrace them, they're just a natural part of the claw hammer style. Over time, you'll be able to control them a little bit more, but they're always gonna be there. So, again, commandment number two, claw hammer motion comes from your arm, not your wrist, certainly not your fingers, and to start off with, nice big motions. Commandment number three, I've already touched on a bit, your hand has to be relaxed. So this is, it, it's hard because you're holding in position to some degree, you're holding your wrist straight, but you're not tense. There's no tension in here. You're not tensing your fingers. You're not closing it into a fist. You're not holding it open. Um, your thumb really wants to fall into the natural position it falls into. So really the way I tend to say to people is hold your arm out like this, keep your wrist straight, and then just relax your thumb naturally, whatever it, your thumb and your hand naturally, whatever it just falls into naturally. A good way to do this is open it wide like that to, to the point of tension and then just let it fall in like this. And everybody's hand position will be slightly different, but you'll notice the thumb is pretty flat. Primarily it's relaxed, that's the most important thing. Don't force it to be flat if your thumb naturally falls like this or something like that. Really as relaxed as possible. Straight wrist, relaxed fingers, because your fingers will naturally close when they're relaxed. Relaxed hand isn't open, nor is it a fist. It's like this. And again, the way to find that position for you is start with like a tense fist. You can feel the tension in that hand and it goes into your wrist. Open it wide to the point of tension again. Again, you'll feel all the tension in your hand, in your wrist, in your knuckles, and then just let it completely relax. And it will, you know, it's not, it doesn't look like a useful hand like this, but this is, this is how we play. That's just, that's just, the style, so you will get used to it in time. It's a bit tricky at first. There is a little bit of holding your hand in a purposeful position, but it's mostly just very relaxed. So, commandment number three again, your hand has to be very relaxed. Commandment number four, 
Your hand shall only ever go up and down. There are only two movements. We have the down stroke. Sometimes we hit one string, sometimes we hit a bunch, but it's just one motion. And then we have moving up. On the way up, sometimes we pluck, sometimes we don't. And in fact, even when you don't, it will sometimes sound out a little bit anyway. But this is really important. Two motions only, down and up, down and up, whether you pluck or not. A lot of people, when they're plucking, they will do this. They will pluck down or out. And you do not want to do that. Do not pluck. In fact, it's not really on the camera very well. Don't pluck down. Try not to pluck out. Because really what you're doing at this point is you'll be going you'll be going down stroke, down pluck, up, down stroke, down, up. And now we've got three motions. One, two, three, one, two, three. And we just want one, two, one, two. This is probably the most important commandment actually. Just two motions. One, two, down and up. The tricky thing is, admittedly, I'm asking you to pluck a string up. You're landing on the top of the string and then you're moving up to pluck it, which seems impossible because how do you do that? Well, you have to kind of get your thumb stuck behind it a little bit, basically. Um, but it is super important because once you've got three movements, you've ruined the style completely. You've made an in a frankly inefficient technique, claw hammer banjo, it is an inefficient technique even less efficient and it will completely ruin your style. So this is something that is really, really worth working on. Two, mo two motions, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And at first you will struggle to control when you're plucking, when you're not plucking, and you'll struggle to, fall and you'll struggle to control the volume of your plucking. Sometimes it'll be too loud and sometimes too quiet, but that's fine. Work again on the general technique, the general style, rather than perfection rather than like the perfect sound. Sound comes secondary to start off with with claw and banjo because you really want to work on the motion, which is quite unintuitive. Um, it's worth noting here as well that this, this, this next bit is more of a general guide, not really a full commandment, but the downstroke, the vast, vast majority of the time is gonna fall on a strong beat. So in a bar, that's the one, two, three, four, where's the up pluck? Is usually, almost invariably, especially when you're a beginner and intermediate, is gonna be falling on the and, 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 so one, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. This just makes everything much easier to keep track of, uh, much more consistent. The only time when you're gonna be plucking on a, a strong beat or doing a down stroke, actually, let's rewind a little bit, because doing a down stroke on a weak beat, on, on, an, on an off beat, on an and, is much less of a problem than doing a thumb pluck on a strong beat. So just to repeat myself, because it's possibly a little bit confusing, the down strokes can fall on both a strong beat, the one, two, three, four, and an off beat, the ands, or and uh, if we're doing it in like a triplet time. But the thumb pluck, it's super important that that falls almost invariably on a, an off beat, on the ands. The only time when you'll have to break that rule is when you're playing like quite complicated things, which will not come up for a good long while, possibly years to be honest, or if you're playing very specific like slip jigs or something like that where the odd time meter just necessitates it. But vast majority of the time, the pluck is off the beat. To repeat, uh, commandment number four again, your hand shall only ever go up and down. There are only two movements. Really make sure this is happening. Um, and the reason, again, I'm repeating myself, is super important, is you wanted to keep two mo motions you're down and then on the way up, once you've gone up, your hand is in position again to go back down straight away. If you add three motions in, you're going down, plucking down and then up again, you have to add in that extra motion to get up to get back down again. I hope that's clear, but you've... I see people do that all the time. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's completely ruined it. One, two, one, two. The second motion inherently brings you back into the right position to do the first motion again. And it really, it needs to be that, otherwise you've ruined it. You've made an already inefficient style much more inefficient. I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but it is super important and it will take you a while to get it. So the more I repeat it, the more you will understand how important it is. Trust me. Commandment number five, your thumb shall always land on a string at the same time as the downstroke. So what do I mean by this? Well, 
when you do a downstroke and you hit maybe all the strings or just one, your thumb lands at the same time as that downstroke happens. Not after, it's at the same time, like that. I've seen some people break this rule a bit, but again, I'm right and they're wrong. There's no two ways about it. It's just much more inefficient to not do that than it is to do that. You really wanna make sure you're doing it. And it's really just having a consistent rule. Because again, we've just got one motion. Everything just happens like this and it, it just, it's completely streamlined the technique. And you really need to do that with claw hammer because it's such an inefficient technique. And again, I'm repeating myself. Um, so when people are breaking this commandment, well, firstly, as we've established, they're breaking one of God's holy claw hammer commandments. So they're probably gonna go to hell, but more importantly, Again, they're just being super, super inefficient. And although you can get away with it in a lot of scenarios, you're just holding yourself back and you don't want to do that for any reason. I get why it happens. That some people don't land their thumb at all if they're not going to plug. So they might do this. Oh, I can't even do it. Some people will do this, for example, down, down, plug, down, down, plug. And you'll notice that here, I'm not landing the thumb at all because it's not going to plug. As far as I'm concerned, that is really bad technique. Again, there are people out there who get away with it. Great, good for them. But it is still bad technique and it will hold you back. You really want that consistency of approach. Um, there's just one rule. Thumb always lands, thumb always comes off. Actually, thumb always comes off is the next one, so we'll come to that in a second. Thumb always lands. If, you, if your rule is thumb sometimes lands, then you've just taken up too much brain space already. It sounds trivial, but it really is not. It also gives your thumb like a solid anchor all the time. It's just, it's always gonna land there. You know exactly where you are. You can orient yourself on the instrument constantly. It's just, it's just much more anchoring, much more efficient, much more stable. It really is super important. Oh, and um, yeah, let your thumb land like quite robustly. I think I said this before, but it can really just hit the banjo head like this. We're not being shy about it at all. Um, you're not just trying to land it on the string. You're trying to just really just whack it off the string to be honest don't be shy about it whatsoever um yeah nice robust landing and it's not just your thumb tip it's not just like the very tip like this it's your whole like thumb pad flat landing on it uh, again the reason we do it like robustly and just your whole thumb landing on it is partly just so you don't have to think about it too much but also just partly because it anchors you much more stable kind of style trust me it these things might seem small but will make a big difference to your playing Commandment number six, I kind of just touched on it actually, uh, and that is that your thumb shall always come back off even if you are not plucking. So what you don't want to do is this, and people do this all the time when they start off. So if they just need to do this a few times, um, let's say Cripple Creek, I can't even do it. See that? Can't do it, it's hard. Whereas it should be. It's always on off with the thumb, just like it's always up down with the motion. So it seems like it could be easier to just do this. Uh, and it probably is easier, but it's definitely worse technique. In the long run, again, it's just something that will hold you back. This is super important. People do struggle with it a lot at first, but don't do it. Make sure that thumb lands and make sure that thumb comes off. These are two motions, just down and up. The only two movements that you ever do. And again, consistency of style. It means you just always know your thumb is always on, thumb is always off. Down, up, down, up. That's all you ever do. Whereas if it sometimes stays on and sometimes comes off, you've got two different rules. And again, it's just taking up too much brain space. It's, it's too much effort. We want to make things as easy as possible. We're trying to be lazy with this. All instruments ultimately it takes a lot of hard work to get good, obviously. But someone who's a good player is actually quite a lazy player. They're being as efficient as possible. They're not trying to waste effort doing something that is kind of holding their playing back for no good reason. So again, rule number six, commandment number six, your thumb shall always come off even if you're not plucking. Obviously it comes off when you're plucking, but even if you're not plucking, it still wants to come off. Cool. Commandment number seven, again, I've touched on this a little bit before. When you do intend to pluck, pluck up and it can be slightly out but it's definitely not down and it's definitely not solely out it's up 
this kind of makes no sense. Uh, it's something people struggle with a lot because you're landing on top of the string and then you're moving up off it. So how do you pluck it? Usually pluck would be kind of like in the opposite direction. Strange, right? But well, your, your thumb kind of just gets stuck behind the string a little bit. If I could take a slow motion video, it would, it would demonstrate quite well. But it hits, thumb kind of gets stuck behind it a bit and then you let it just kind of twist around a bit. This is something you just need to try yourself. Everybody will be slightly different and it is unintuitive, but as long as you're making sure it happens up, you don't need to worry too much at first about it being like a nice loud, like popping kind of pluck. This sound, you can bring it out eventually over time, but to start off with, in fact, to start off with, it might be very quiet. It might be like this. And you might think, well, I need to pluck down or out to really get that volume, but you don't. It will come with time. It just takes a bit of practice. But again, really important that you pluck up because we've only got those two motions. You need to be up here in order to be able to go back down again. If you pluck down, you're down here, and then you need to bring your hand up again, and now you've got three motions. Super important that you pluck up and only up. Okay, cool. This next one is actually just a general tip for all instruments and many things in life, but you need to practice slowly. This is just a universal. This needs to be applied to all the previous commandments. Do things one conscious movement at a time slowly and repeat it. You need to repeat it a lot slowly. Over time, you can build up that speed, but don't get too fast immediately. It will fall apart. Um, you're allowed to push your tempo a bit and try, you know, try to find the limits of what you can play and at what speed. But if you push too fast, too quickly, it will end in tears. It really will. Um, so this is something everyone needs to do. Everyone needs to be reminded sometimes to just play slower. Everybody likes to rush through things. It's super common. Um, I still struggle with this. You know, I need to slow my playing down if I'm practicing something that's particularly difficult. But really is just something you need to do. So... Slow your playing down until whatever you're doing is where it needs to be in terms of accuracy. And when I say accuracy again, I don't mean hitting each note with your right hand perfectly. I mean the general technique is right. And then speed it up. Then you can speed it up a little bit at a time until you get to the right tempo. So again, commandment number eight, practice slowly and repeat things a lot, a lot. <laughs> cool, so commandment number nine, don't worry about right hand accuracy at first. I've said this a lot. I say this in every lesson I teach. I've said this in previous videos I've done, but really don't worry about this right hand accuracy. We're trying to get the general technique right rather than getting perfect accuracy. This is a little bit unintuitive and actually it's the opposite of most, most instruments. Um, it's the opposite of most things. Like You can't take this approach if you're learning how to drive a car, for example. You can't concentrate primarily on the motion of doing you know doing a turn or something like that you need to have the muscle memory down accurately because you know people's lives are at risk firstly if you're in a car but also it's just how we learn most things but Oklahoma banjo the motion is actually quite unintuitive and you need to focus on getting the general relaxed motion and rhythm right rather than trying to be too accurate so if you're aiming to hit one string in particular let's say this little tune if you concentrate too hard on getting the rhythm right, you're likely going to be teeing your hand up and bringing in other bad techniques like not pulling your thumb off, well, not lifting your thumb off each time. Whereas in actual fact, you can actually be quite sloppy even with something like that. Yeah, I wasn't being very accurate or with the right hand there, but it's not a major problem when we're tuned to G and we're playing a tune in G, which you will be most of the time, especially as a beginner on the banjo. So. Do not worry too much about that right hand accuracy. This really is actually one of the most important for like absolute beginners because people will try too much to watch this right hand and really tee up the hand and be like, oh, I need to watch exactly where it's landing. And it really holds people back quite a lot. I think I'll make a video specifically on this at some point. But yeah, if you're worrying too much about specifically which, which note you're hitting, which string you're hitting, rather than just trying to get the style right, your style and technique will suffer because you'll have to do something slightly wrong in order to, to get that pure accuracy. But again, let it fall by the wayside temporarily. Commandment number nine is do not worry too much about right hand accuracy. It will come in time. Concentrate on technique and style first. And finally, commandment number 10, and that is you need to watch your fretting hand, not your claw hammer hand. 
This is true most of the time. If you're doing a sole like right hand exercise or claw hammer hand exercise, you can watch it because you're not doing anything with this hand. And when we start, when you start, you're probably doing more right hand exercises than left hand exercises, like just isolated right hand exercises. So you probably will do it a bit, but over time, this right hand needs to become automatic and you want to watch this hand because this is the one that's doing things, you know, it's playing chords, it needs to be in specific places. This one wants to become automatic and it will become automatic. You just need to really focus on not watching it. And again, this ties in with your accuracy thing. You're not watching it and it doesn't need to be too accurate, but people get into this mindset of it needs to be super accurate, therefore I'm gonna watch this right hand. But again, you know, if I play Cripple Creek, I was playing that pretty much as sloppily as I can with this right hand, but it still sounds fine because everything's tuned to G, I'm still hitting the right notes, I just happen to be hitting other notes at the same time. But it's not a massive problem. So I would sum this up by saying that your right hand is kind of like the motor of the banjo and it just kind of powers it. Whereas your left hand is kind of like the steering wheel, you're choosing where you're going. So you really need to be focusing on direction. Whereas this part of it, the motor of it just happens automatically. It will feel very hard to get to that point of automatic playing with this right hand, but you will get there. Banjo, claw hammer banjo isn't necessarily super difficult, but it's strange. It's unintuitive. It could be quite, quite, yeah, it'll take a while to get used to it, but it's not fundamentally hard. It's actually easier, I think, in most ways than three fingered banjo. Um, but we need to get over that kind of strange, unintuitive style that we have. It's very unique in kind of the West. The, the, it's very unique within Western music. It's just it's just a strange style. There's nothing quite like it, other than weirdly slap bass guitar, which is actually similarly kind of counterintuitive. Yeah, to sum up, commandment number 10, watch your fretting hand, not the claw hammer hand. So from beginning to end, the 10 commandments are, and jot these down because these are important. Again, in order of, not importance, but in order of what needs sorted first. So. Firstly, it's posture. Make sure you're sitting up straight with your banjo in your lap, between your legs and pointing slightly up like this. Really make sure your posture is right. Number two, the claw hammer motion is from your arm, not from your wrist, not from your fingers. And it's a big motion to start off with. It will become smaller over time. Number three, your hand needs to be very relaxed. No, we want as it's pretty much no tension in your hand or your wrist. There probably is like a tiny bit. The muscle is holding it in place slightly, but it's still super, super relaxed. Number four, the claw hammer motion is two movements only. You only ever go down and up. Not three motions, just two. Commandment number five, your thumb needs to always land on the top string. Over time, you learn how to do drop thumb, but the principle is the same. It always lands on a string at the same time as the downstroke. So like that. As soon as that downstroke happens, that thumb is already there. It's not downstroke and then thumb land. It happens at the same time. Number six, your thumb needs to always come back off, even if you're not plucking. So it's landed and then back off again. Land off. Do not keep your thumb on there so you can do this. We don't want that. On, off, on, off, two motions only. Number seven, when you do mean to pluck, when you do pluck the string, pluck up. This is strange, it's weird. You're landing on a string and then plucking up, but it's important. Again, it's part of that two motion um, movement thing. Down, up. If you pluck down, you need another motion to bring it back to the top. You got three, only ever two. Good. Number eight. Practice slowly. This is a universal to all instruments and a lot of things that we do. Practice slowly, not too fast. Take your time. Commandment number nine, don't worry about right hand accuracy. This will hold you back if you're worrying too much about it. Just, just let it happen as it's happening. If you hit too many strings, that's fine. Just make sure you hit the right string. If you hit another string at the same time, that's not, not really a big problem. Don't worry about right hand accuracy. And commandment 10 is related to this. Do not watch this hand. Watch your fretting hand. You need to watch this. This needs to be automatic and it will get there, but it needs to become automatic. It doesn't matter if it's sloppy. Don't watch this hand, watch this one because we need more accuracy here. This is the motor of the claw hammer style. This is the steering wheel. It's more important to know where you're going and to trust in the motor doing its job, which is kind of pushing the car along in this tortured analogy, 
pushing the banjo along. It's kind of just keeping it going. And this is the kind of fine motor skills part. Good. Those are my 10 commandments. I really do think that if you follow these, it will massively benefit your playing. These are the 10 commandments I've kind of boiled down from, you know, a few years of teaching people and, and just giving advice. And I'd say for the first year, maybe, of playing, these are the 10 biggest tips that someone can go away with. Over time, a lot of these things will become automatic and the Clockham style will feel really natural and intuitive and just straightforward. But it takes just a little bit of work and making sure that you follow these quite strictly to start and then the confidence with which you play will just skyrocket. Anyway, that's me. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.